Welcome to Out FM, the weekly program about the politics and culture of the lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, two-spirit, and intersex communities here on listener-sponsored, non-commercial, WBAI, New York. Our opening theme is Together by Betty. I'm John Riley, tonight's host. We're tremendously excited about tonight's show, which marks the beginning of what we hope will be an enduring collaboration with Black Trans Media. In January, we brought you an interview with Sasha Alexander, one of the co-founders and directors of Black Trans Media, a group that centers Black trans people for the purposes of documenting their history and current situation here in New York and elsewhere. Sasha interviews writer and podcaster Dakota Patterson in a wide ranging conversation on how Dakota was inspired by Russell Simmons' spoken word TV series, Deaf Poetry Jam. They discuss what it is to be black and trans in the US today as anti-trans legislation is being proposed in state after state. They also explore Dakota's new essay on that topic, published at aninjusticemag.com, titled, It's Not a Ban, It's a Genocide. We'll end the show with an excerpt of a 1995 speech given by the late author and radical activist, Leslie Feinberg. In it, Feinberg called for unity and struggle across apparent divides of sex, class, race, and gender expression. But first, we'll start with Sasha Alexander's interview with Dakota Patterson. You're listening to Black Trans Media on Out of M as part of our movement dispatch. This is Sasha Alexander of Black Trans Media. We exist to shift and reframe the value and worth of Black trans people everywhere. Hashtag Black Trans Everything. And you're tuning into our new coverage featuring the voices and stories and experiences of Black trans and gender nonconforming people. Um, we are here today with Dakota Patterson, and so excited to have you joining us to talk more about your work and specifically your recent article, It's Not a Ban, It's a Genocide, which was published in Injustice Magazine and Medium Online and talking about, among things, anti-trans legislation. Mm. And so I'm um, super honored to have you here with us and to dive into this. And can we just start by you just telling us a little more about you, your pronouns, and where you're from? Um, Dakota Patterson, uh, pronouns she, her. I am a writer, uh, author, painter, et cetera. <laughs> and um, I'm currently in Ohio, and I am from Riverside, California. Right on, right on. Um, and you mentioned, you know, obviously being a writer, like, yes. can you talk more about what got you into writing, why you write, what you write about? So I first started writing when I was in seventh grade, and it was because my teacher, Mr. Cuppersmith, I cannot believe I remember his name, but he told me one day, because he saw, like, I was just always just very, like, very, like, observant. But I was obviously feeling a lot. And then he kind of just told me like, oh, you should write. And I was like, write what? And he was told me to write poetry. And I never read poetry or heard poetry at this time. And I was like, I don't know how to do it. And he was like, you'll figure it out. So I just started writing from there. And then I heard about Def Jam poetry. Wow, my age is showing. <laughs> I heard about Def Jam poetry. And I remember I wanted to go in there so bad, but I was too young. So I wrote a poem every day up until I was 18. But by the time I was 18, the show was canceled. So I said, well, <laughs> I guess that's that. So I just, yeah, I've been writing since seventh grade. And I like mess with different formulas or formats, poetry. I wrote for the school newspaper in high school. Um, and Yes, you know, it's just personal journals. I've always wanted to write a book despite not knowing how to. And yeah. And you did write a book, right? For yeah. Familiar with your book. Um, do you yeah. want to tell us a little bit about what that book is uh, called, what it's about? Yes. Yeah, so the book is called Nothing Really Happens, which is, you know, pretty existentialist. Um, <laughs> and it's just, I wrote it in the mid, like it's truly through the process of having a mental breakdown. And 
you kind of see the journey of before and then going into just really how I'm seeing the world, how the things in the world are affecting me and everything around there. I've always been a very observant person. So the book is truly an observation. It tackles into mental health. It tackles into, you know, obviously being trans. And when I wrote this book, I was six, it was six days before I started hormone therapy. So when I wrote the book, I looked very, very different. And I didn't read the book until afterwards because that's just my process. When I write, it's very unconscious. So I, I'm not really conscious when I'm writing, the words come out, I kind of disassociate. And then when I come back in two, boom, there's the book. Wow. I mean, uh, just like exciting to hear about your process and love. And Axel, we, I was just saying, I'm like ordered, ordered the book and ordering the book and folks should read the book um, and excited to, um, but have loved your articles that you've been writing. And that's how actually um, Black Trans Media, we found out about you was this recent piece. It's not a ban, it's a genocide. And mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Just your framing of violence um, uh, of, around legislation as genocide really resonated with us and was very mm -hmm. powerful. And I was just going to read, there was one little piece of it just for our um, listeners um, who might not have read it. Um, you said, uh, quote, 2021 is a record breaking year for anti transgender legislation. 33 states out of 50 have sent in more than 100 bills that will strip away transgender rights across the country. In this month, which was April 2021, alone, um, you have seen for bills calling for the ban of participation in same gender sports, gender affirming care for minors, curriculum, and ID restrictions. Um, you wrote, I have seen these bills call for the removal of a child from the parent's home. I have seen these bills call for the parents to be thrown in jail, for the teachers to out the child, and what uh, I consider to be the most alarming genital inspections. Um, mm -hmm. Obviously, all of those things you just wrote about are like, I mean, talk about mental health, like you were just talking about your book, right? For us and for folks who are Black and trans or at any intersection of this, can you just tell us more about what's going on with this legislation and why, um, why you chose to write about it? Yeah, so I was sitting in my living room when I heard about that bill in Florida. And that was the one where they were calling for general inspections. And when I read about that, like, obviously, I was sick to my stomach. And then... I noticed on all of my timelines, on no matter which social media platform it was, it was a complete silence. No one had said anything about it. And I remember going, someone needs to say something. Someone needs to say something. And I figured, you know, if no one's going to have this conversation. I'm going to start it. So I decided that I was going to sit down. I was going to write this essay. And it just... It was really tough to write because I try to, when I try to write, I try not to like go like super, super in on my opinions. Otherwise there would be a whole lot more cuss words. Um, but someone had to say something. It was just insane to me how all these bills, I said 2021, I believe there is 121 legislations that have been introduced and it's it's literally a record-breaking year. It's it's the highest that it's been. And I say it goes from different areas, different areas that affect all of us in this community. Safety, mental health, like I, I can go on and on and on and on for hours, but I knew that I had to write this because I knew that not only do I need to start this conversation for other people, but for the trans youth, especially, you know, like, so as I could only imagine if this was going on when I was younger. I, it's no secret that we struggle with suicide, you know, like no secret. And it's, it's, that's what I mean by it's a genocide. You know, I don't take that word lightly. It, it is, it is intentional. These bills, they're intentional. They know exactly what's going to come from this. And me writing this is doing my part and ensuring like, hey, we're here. Keep fighting. We're here. <clears throat> right on. That's a really important message. And, and you bring up 
um, youth, um, and obviously, hopefully, all of us get to age as trans people too, right? And not just be young people. But there was your your like byline in the story was like the government is against us. The allies are not enraged and doing enough, and we've been left here to fight alone. And I think you know what you expressed like a lot of young people and just trans folks. Um, I mean, similar to being black, you know, when legislation comes out, it's like, you know, there's a like a really isolated feeling. Um, yes. so I'm wondering, like, what do you want? What do you want people to know right now? Um, what do you want those trans youth to know? Um, and what do you want people maybe, you know, what do you want people to do or, or know? Yeah. What I want people to know is that this is happening at this moment, whether we see it or hear it or not, it's happening right now. There is there is a trans youth trans man, trans woman, non-binary, someone right now in this moment, they're getting followed, they're getting attacked, they're being discriminated against, they're being murdered. Like this is happening every day, everywhere, whether we hear it or not, it's happening. And I'm hoping that we get to a point in society where we do more than a hashtag. A lot of times this, a lot of times these tragedies come out and you just hear, oh, you're valid. You're valid, you're valid, you're valid. And you hear it over and over and over. So I'm hoping that we get to a point where we do more than that, where people do more than say you're valid, you know, because of course we're valid, you know, like, of course, you know, so hopefully you get to a point where it's more than you're valid. It's more than a hashtag. So many tragedies happen and we just become hashtags. And then the hashtag goes away when it happens to someone else and there's another hashtag. So I'm hoping that we put action behind these hashtags and action behind these words whether that's starting a trans support group in your areas. <clears throat> if you can't do it in person, because obviously, you know, COVID is COVID, you know, do it online, create a space online, have these conversations, reach out to people, make like, there's just so much that could be done that's not being done because we're just being told, oh, you're valid. But you know, outside being valid, we're also discriminated against, we're also murdered, we're also attacked, we're also harassed. We're more than just, you know, this is more than, and we deserve more than what's going on. So I'm hoping that people put action behind these words. I hope the trans youth knows that we are fighting hard. You know, I cry about this every day. Like we are trying and we are fighting and it's going to be okay. So please just hold on. I know how hard it is to not hold on, but hold on. We got you. No, definitely right on. And I feel like that's part of what, you know, drove you to write this piece, right? Is for more folks to be able to hear these words and feel, you know, like that it can be very scary, obviously, yes. to live in a in a country where um, that kind of violence is being generated around your identity, you know? Uh, and I'm wondering for you, I don't know if there's a piece of it um, specifically that stood out that Ooh. you might wanna, um, okay, <laughs> yeah, read for us. <laughs> Um, again, knowing, you know, not everybody, hopefully everybody will click on the article and read it fully, but for those who are listening right now, um, to get some um, really juicy pieces of it, um, again, we have Dakota Patterson here, and she is going to read from um, a little bit of It's Not a Ban, It's a Genocide, so. Yes. All right, so the part that I highlighted, because it's the part that really struck me the most, was... I have stared at the blank computer screen, unsure of what to write or how to write it. I watched as my fingers trembled, felt my heart race as minutes passed. I'm currently sitting with more questions than answers, and the answers that are being given are not any help. I'm unsure how this will end for us. I'm unsure if we, the transgender citizens here in the States, will obtain some sort of victory, or if we will all die trying. The only thing that I am sure of is that we are in danger and no one seems to care enough. It seems to me that every day the government does whatever it can to prevent trans people, youth and adult from feeling any sort of dignity. I've never understood how it was or why it was that people who have never lived a day in our lives have the power to make policies and laws that affect every aspect of it. From a critical thinking standpoint, you would assume that in order to have a job, you must be qualified for it. However, the United States government continues to prove that you don't need experience to make policies that will, lead to, that will lead to more deaths in the trans community. They continue to prove that all you need is an opinion on your religious faith. 2021 is a record-breaking year for anti-transgender legislation. 
33 states out of 50 have sent in more than 100 bills that would strip away transgender rights across the country. And that's that's the part I highlighted because that part, I, yes. I cried while typing this. <laughs> I cried while typing this because it's, it's something that I don't think drives home to many people, especially the part where I'm mentioning where these people who have not spent a day in our shoes, have they never spent a day in our shoes, they never even talk to us. We are not in these rooms when these legislations are being written. We're not in these rooms when they're being brought to the floor, the House or the Senate, we're not there, but it affects us and not them. It's a bit ironic, like you would think, you know, if you're going to work somewhere, if I wanna work at a bookstore, which I do, <laughs> they would tell me, oh, well, do you have any experience working at a bookstore? So why is it that you need experience in every other aspect except when it comes to this? When it comes to government, you don't need to be, you don't need, to, you don't need experience. You just need your opinion. And a lot of their opinions, as I said, they're based on their religious faith. America has been ran like a Christian country, despite us being a country with freedom to practice whatever religion, but yet we're, we're ran based under the Christian faith. Yeah. No, and similarly, right, it's a like white supremacist country when there's, you know, this, you know, land is, was stolen and so people were stolen to and brought to it. And, um, you know, you write actually about this, which I love because you go from talking about like the, anti-trans legislation to talking about like what's going on in this country, you know? Mm -hmm. um, and so I'm wondering actually, um, you know, because we love to be able to connect like what's going on here locally and thinking about what's going on globally. And I guess I'm just wondering, you know, what do you feel like the role of legislation really is in, in our people getting free, whether it's here or, um, or anywhere in the world, but do you feel like that is a piece of the puzzle? I, I do. I feel, in a way, you know, I feel that in order for us to be free, there's so many issues that need to be tackled that, and they never, they never get tackled. You know, like, it's hard to feel, it's, hard, it's really hard to feel hopeful these days, and it's hard to feel as if we will ever be free in this so-called land of the free because there's so many chains that are on so many people that prevents any sort of freedom. In, in my community alone, in the Black community alone, like it is so hard to find any sort of solidarity unless you're trans yourself. You know, there, there's, it's just, there's just all, there's just all this noise and all these things that are preventing people from saying, hey, we are people. We are people and these legislations continue to get passed and brought up and this is dehumanized and dehumanized and dehumanized. So we're being dehumanized in legislation, but then we're also being dehumanized outside of legislation. It just kind of feels like in a way, it starts to feel hopeless in a way. How can we get to a point where we're seen as people, we're respected as people? How can we get our freedom when everyone is doing everything they can to prevent us from ever being free. Mm. Like what yeah. it was just this year where Biden was saying that trans people can enroll into the military as if trans people were not already enrolled in the military, but it's a land of free. Oh, freedom isn't free is what they say, you know, but there are so many, there's so many trans people I know who served in the military and they got nothing, they got nothing for it. But trauma, trauma, PTSD, they couldn't be themselves because if you're trans at this point, you couldn't be open in the military. Yeah. Like it's Yeah, and I think what's so deep about those systems <laughs> like the military, for example, too, is like cis people, you know, are not even necessarily given what they, they you know, should be given by these systems, let alone, Black people, let alone trans people, let alone Black trans people, you know? And so it's like, 
this is a larger struggle that then, like you said, because we're trans, um, other folks then don't want, you know, we, we're not in the room, you know, and not even like, oh, you know, we didn't get here about the meeting. Like people don't want us in the room. If we're in the room, people might misgender, misname us, mistreat us, like value us less, you know? Yes. And so, you know, I hear what you're saying about the future, you know, and I feel like hope, um, it can feel really hard, but it's super important. <clears throat> You said yes. and so i'm wondering if you can share like for yourself you know like what is some of your vision for the future you know for black trans folks what would you what would you like for for us for our folk i would like for us to not only have our own space but to just be able to exist in any space comfortably to be able to go to a grocery store and not be misgendered, not be stared at, to go shopping and not have people give us the side eye and you know, be able, I would love to be able to, you know, take my kids to school and the teacher's not concerned, you know, about my kids, you know, or their well being because I'm trans, you know. I would hope that we get to a point in society where they realize we just exist, just like you guys exist. We're we're not, you know, we're not here to cause trouble. <clears throat> Excuse me. We're not here to cause trouble. I hope we can, and like, you know, this there's little things, you know, there's little things like I would like to go to the bathroom and just pee. <laughs> you know, like I like to go to the bathroom and just pee and not have to like wait until the bathroom's empty or worry about, you know, someone clocking me. And then, but I'm also a I'm also a different type of person where um I don't exist for cis people or their approval, nor do I care for it. <laughs> I I I exist whether whether they like it or not. I'm here, whether they like it or not. And you know, I do hope that trans people do get to a point where we we don't care about their opinions. I wrote another essay about the ideology of passing and the danger of it. And um, there's some people who agree and there's some people who disagree. And you know, I personally hope we get to a point where we drop that. What 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 is passing? Who passes? Cis people don't pass. It's all in misogyny. There's no woman, no woman looks one way, no man looks one way. So we should not be hating ourselves and bringing ourselves down or checking each other saying, oh, you have to pass, you have to pass. The point of us existing is not passing or for disapproval. We exist because we do. And <laughs> that's a whole nother conversation <laughs> that I would never shut up about. No, that's a super important conversation to have and also to direct people listening to um, you're writing that you're a writer and there's more that you're going to be writing about and will continue to to share with the world and whether people see it because black trans media will share it right or follow you um dakota patterson right on twitter um this actually kind of goes into this next question which is just kind of what's coming up next for you and how can folks support your work okay so um obviously i write essays on medium and that is, I believe the Medium blog is called American Melancholy. Um, obviously, keep up with me on Twitter, which is Dakota Patterson, or Instagram, which is by Dakota Patterson. My book, Nothing Really Happens, is out on Amazon. And I'm currently, oh wait, hey, exclusive. Um, <clears throat> I'm currently working with Barnes & Noble, you know, about doing a second edition of nothing really happens and it will be a hardcover which is my first hardcover ever so i'm trying to you know i'm in the process with that working on that so yeah nothing really happens is out on amazon and um yeah I, oh yeah i have a podcast see I'm, i told you i'm so terrible at marketing. Oh, you're amazing you're amazing tell us what's the podcast uh the the podcast is called fresh brewed coffee um it's not about coffee coffee is a big part of my life but it's not about coffee it's more you know 
philosophy and society and culture and self-help, I guess, if you will. Um, that's on Apple Podcasts, which they still didn't update my picture. So <laughs> um, they're Spotify <laughs> and yeah, so Spotify and Apple Podcasts, Fresh Brewed Coffee. I'm currently on hiatus because I refuse to use the pandemic as a way to push more episodes and more episodes, you know, I have morals, but the, <laughs> the past two seasons are up. So <laughs> new, new season is coming soon. New work is coming soon. Uh, Super exciting and can't <laughs> wait um, for that. And, and, you know, one thing we um, always ask every Black trans person that we interview as Black trans media or we have over the years is if you could say one thing to Black trans people all over the world, what would you say? Stop letting people steal the conversation from you. <laughs> okay, stop, stop letting people silence you. All right, we're we're not beneath anyone. All right, we don't let anyone speak for us because our experience is ours, and don't allow that. Don't don't allow that to escape you. You know, you have a voice, you have a story, and it needs to be heard. You know, so own your experience. Speak on your experience. Don't allow yourself to get stepped on and uh, stay cute. <laughs> okay, Ashe, right on. Thank you so much again, Dakota. Thank again, you. for folks who are listening, this is Black Trans Media on Out FM, and I'm Sasha Alexander of Black Trans Media. We have had an amazing time here with Dakota Patterson speaking about her recent Hi. article, It's Not a Band, It's a Genocide. Mm. And we are. Um, closing out this interview and just thanking her for her time oh, and brilliance you. and continued um, action in the world and mm -hmm. love that she puts out there to our folks. So um, please stay connected and follow her and follow Black Trans Media and LFM for more of our movement and media dispatch. Um, That was an interview Sasha Alexander conducted with Dakota Patterson about her essay, It's Not a Ban, It's a Genocide. You're listening on Out FM, on WBAI New York 99.5 FM, and on the web at WBAI.org. Out FM shows are archived at outfm.org, where you can sign up for our newsletter. Follow us on Twitter at OutFM. That's just O-U-T-F-M. I'm John Wiley, tonight's host. <laughs>